All right, everybody, welcome back to Above and Below. Today, I have a special, special guest. I have David Cohen on. You're a captain for tarpon fishing near Miami. And uh, we had a little chat before this. We're both frothing to talk about tarpon right now. This is going to be a really fun one for both of us. I can't wait, man. It's my my life, you know, the story of my life. We got to get a little bit a uh, little bit about yourself, dude. So where, where are you from and uh, how did you get into the tarpon uh, game? Yes, um, born and raised here in my uh, South Florida, Fort Lauderdale. But um, I always ventured to Miami to fish because my grandma lived there, um, in my early year, in the early nineties, mid nineties, I just, um, went over there because, uh, and started getting into it because it's, uh, one of the only fish, you know, that you, that's that big that you don't need a lot of money to catch. You could get a fish that's, that's yeah. a huge fish and you just need pretty much, you could fish off land for them. You can fish anywhere. So I started doing that. Um, I think I hooked a couple actually freshwater bass fishing before I even did that and lost them immediately. No yeah, way. Yeah. Back, I had to be 12 years old and shiner fishing hook a tarp and on my little bass rod had on for half a second jumped up in the air and i was that was like the first i remember that fish it was in a little lake back here and that sparked it and from there just just hooking them and missing and losing them and but just seeing that that was the story <laughs> from about 12 to 15 years old and um i was just enamored by this cool fish that rolls and, you know, huge, yeah. but how do I catch them? And uh, back then it was a lot more difficult. We didn't have, and it was, this is the nineties. So we didn't have braid or fluorocarbon or any of the good equipment we have today. So you had to really yeah. um, use light, light tackle and fight them for a long time. And um, hopefully occasionally you'll get, you got, I got lucky, um, you know, at towards 14, 15, I caught my first couple fish and that was, uh, it, uh, and I, you were just hooked. hooked. I was, uh, what, uh, so you, you're, you're a captain correct. too, right? Yes. I, I, now I target, uh, tarpon year round out of Miami. My love, my love. It's been five years now I've been guiding. Um, it's not a long time cause I'm 41. So I started late. I, I got my degree in exercise physiology and worked as a trainer for 15 years and then slowly made the transition to, guiding because that's my true passion to put people on fish and um it's been great it's been it takes a long time to get going but now I'm, I, I couldn't picture myself ever doing anything else you know it's, it's, tarpon really truly are amazing amazing creatures it's crazy and i get that now from guiding is that feeling of like i said 20 plus years ago when i caught my first because you see people that see that jumping that unbelievable hundred 50, 100, 150 pound animal flying through the air and the faces and the enthusiasm gets me fired up every time. It really doesn't get old. Yeah. I, and then to see them catch it and take their picture of the fish, a lot of them want as a bucket list for their lifetime. And to make it happen is, um, it's like the other aspect of catching the fish. Once you catch them and you learn how to catch them, now if you could actually get other people to learn how to catch them and fight it the right way to land it is, um, it just brings up, it's a whole different level, which, I love and I can't wait to just evolve and get deeper, deeper into the rabbit's nest, which is tarpon. What is so special to you about tarpon? Like what, why tarpon out of every fish in the ocean? Why tarpon? Number one is probably the sheer size for, uh, for the size and, and acrobatic display that it shows. There's nothing that has that power. Yeah, there's sailfish and there's other mahi and fish offshore, some snook jump, but nothing is that big that jumps, that puts on that kind of acrobatic display, which no other, if you've ever hooked a big tarpon, it's never, no display is the same. And they've got this will once they are hooked that they don't, I don't care who you are. You can't bring them in right away. So it's a lot of skill set of he won't come in, you know, anywhere if, depending on 20 minutes to two hours. So that's, that's, that's why yeah. the tarpon is, it, it just doesn't give up. Even when it's by the boat and somebody's like, Oh, it's by the boat. You got him. No, he's just saying hi to the boat. He's, he's coming up and then you've got another 20 or 30 minutes, even though he's right there. <laughs> trust me, you got 20 minutes left. He's just, and so you have to circle. And that will is like there, any fish that has will, 
is going to be an awesome, badass fish, excuse my language. But if somebody um, is that big that has a will and it could get to 200 pounds, you know, it, it could, it, and it's just, you never can master it. They're always, they'll always, um, that's another thing is they're so, they evolve through tech, um, technology and lines. So like things that I caught them on a lot lesser line, 10 years ago, I can't do those same things today because they're smart. They evolve yeah. with it. So it kind of always, they keep you on your toes constantly. When you think you got to figure it out, you don't. Um, so it's, that's one of the things that probably the, the jumps and just, we could get into just the, the, the tarpon itself as a, a, as an animal. How big, how big do tarpon get? I want to, I, th- I want to say it's a 243 pounds. I wish I, I don't know the exact number. They've been known. They've got to they, be bigger than that. They got to be 300. There's been so many documents yeah. of 300 pound tarpon in Africa and other places, which they didn't get the right, um, the right stuff needed to document it. But it's been said yeah. that they get to, th- which I can't even imagine a 300 pounder. Are they? Are there regulations? I mean, obviously, there's there's high regulations, yes, right? Yes, for yes. fishing, you can't pull them out of the water. And yes, you have to anything over forty inches, you, you have to keep in the water. Yeah, anything you, you you could pull them out, which I don't recommend under forty inches. But anything over forty inches, you got to keep them in the water because what happens is, is you pick them up out of the water. They're so strong and powerful, you're not ready for it, and the angler ends up dropping yeah. it on the deck, and you try to revive it and. It doesn't make it. That's one thing that's imperative that the people um, listening to this podcast is take care of it. Get the tarpon in as fast as you possibly can and then release it as fast as you take a quick pick in the water and then release it. Because once the, the fish hits its threshold, there's no coming back. It's not you're not going to revive him once he hits his wind. So you It's in and out. And the worst thing you want to see is you took one too many pictures and the fish died, a, a, a fish that's anywhere from up to 50, 60 years old. They're older than you or me, uh, than me. So you kill that animal. So that's yeah. imperative. And we're getting better and better at a society, at as anglers of, of taking care of the animal. But, um, you know, you live and learn. There's some, the younger anglers and I get it. I was there. You're just so, so stoked. stoked. And you're in the moment, yeah. the picture, and you want to get the great yeah. shot. And I get it. Cause I was there. But at the end of the day, once you do yeah. that, get used to just taking care of them because we need them for, our kids, kid, next gen, future generations, and yeah, it won't happen unless we take care of them the right way. But we've implemented the right regulations to make it the fish thrive. Yeah, what are you, what are you using to catch these things? You, there, that's what's also freaking amazing about them. You could catch, and they, anyway, they they range from ten pounds to two hundred pounds. So, that so you so want to gear towards whatever tarpon you're targeting. So, if you see tarp, if you're marking them or you're rolling, you want to see kind of what animal you're approaching. Sometimes they're all hundred pounders. So, you're for that. The bait wise, they eat. mullet would be number one on my list, and that is just for Miami. Every that's what's also awesome about tarpon. Wherever you go. The bait changes. The ways they eat has changed. So somebody that tarpon guide in Tampa doesn't do the same stuff as I do, and my stuff won't work. Vice versa, his stuff won't work here. So oh, wow. no matter what. So that's what's wild. They they get used to whatever their natural forage is in that area. And if you introduce something that they're not used to eating, they won't eat it. Like if I put a crab out in the back country or in the calm waters, they don't see crabs. They only see mullet and shrimp. <laughs> so they're like, or even a shrimp sometimes. They won't. They won't yeah. mess with that. So no, you totally. gotta kind of wherever you're going, figure out what bait is in the area and um and match the hatch. And then that's the same. So you uh, mullet. I'll go through the list of any any mullet, threadfin herring, shrimp, crabs, um, any uh, dead bait. They're scavengers. They eat pretty much anything on the bottom, um, if it's fresh, preferably. Um, and I would recommend that for anglers if they do that in the afternoon. Um, but you also, but all these baits, the key is to match your gear to the size of the hook and the bait you have. So if you have a small crab, yeah. you want a 304, a, a 4.0 size hook with lighter leader because it's a small bait. Yeah. It needs the room to move and look natural. So go with, um, with whatever, like I said, whatever fish you feel are in that area, always um, target and and use the gear that will maximize your chance of getting the bite. So you always want to get away with the least amount of test line, fluorocarbon leader line. You can because uh, they have yeah. this vision that is second to none, um, which I could jump into in a, a second just about their vision, which I find extremely fascinating is – 
They're called Megalops atlanticus is their scientific name. So Megalops means big eye. And so their eye has five cones in it and cones are what refracts light. So we have three and other insects have two. So they see, when they look up, they see a hundred million colors. We see one million colors. So they could see any light and they change, they have, it's a refractive lens. So they see based off of it's too light or too dim, they could change their lens to see what's going on. So it's, it's crazy. So, they're, so when you have a bait and if your hook is a little too big or your line is a little too thick, they look up with that big eye and they could see everything. So they're checking out all your, your stuff. So you want to get away with the smallest hook and the smallest line you can get away with. But the problem is it's the big animal. So you want to get away with the most as you yeah. can. But um, yeah. they're just they, so th between the vision um, and 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 their patterns, they go all, they go offshore over twenty miles to spawn, and they lay this larvae that um, it's it, they come out in a transparent and a translucent state, little swim like thing. They don't need a lot of food like billfish and snappers, that which need to eat immediately yeah. after being born. They are good. Yeah. And then they go all the way back into the estuary because they go offshore because it's high salinity. They have they can't get they can't be born in low salinity. So then they come back into the estuary with low salinity. And that's where they live for the first three years because the predators can't take them down there because it's low salinity. So the sharks and other stuff, so they'll hang out in there, feed on local finger mullet, um, guppies, anything that has also has low salinity, get big enough to get back out. Um, but it's amazing how far, and they travel, to, you know, 20, uh, what did they say, 2,000 miles, and they'll travel 20 miles in a day. So where you see them one, it's like where you see them one day, and that's me as a tarpon guy, and I'm like, listen, I was here yesterday, yeah. and all these tarpon are here, and the next day I got clients, and I show up to the spot, and all those hundreds of tarpon left. They just, I don't know if a leaf fish goes, yeah. and they all go. So um, they're just, why, and there's, and these are all from conditions, whether it be moon phases or temperature change. They don't like an area. They they are feeling comfortable. They're they're persnickety. They're 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 out. They're out. Yeah. Um, so it, it keeps you, like I said, on your toes constantly because you never really could get a grasp and hold on to those certain fish for an extended period of time. And then if you catch fish from that area. They're smart. They see their buddy, Uncle Jerry, or whoever it is being caught. And within minutes from the splashing, they'll all lead as well. And you won't get a hook after that because they know. And it's like talking about humans. You're like, this is a fish, but it's not a fish. It's yeah. like, it's different. Dude, that yeah. is crazy. Yeah. So um, they're like dinosaurs. They're total dinosaurs. <laughs> they're 120 mil million years old. Their ancestors were around with the Tyrannosaurus Rex and all the dinosaurs. They're, they're all there. They're, and then- 18 million years ago is the state of the tarpon now, is how long they've been around. We, as humans, have been around, changed from the chimpanzee state six million years ago. So they were around three times longer than we are. So as much as we think we know it, um, they, they're- No, those things are, tarpon are insane. insane. They're, they're, they're insane. Great. The females are the ones that live to 200, but they get to 200 pounds because they need to be big, long and girthy to carry a lot of eggs to drop them because they want to lay as much eggs as possible. So males stop at about 100 pounds. Uh, I'll get into a little bit more on targeting these. So when you approach tarpon, the first thing you want to do is shut off your motor, get your trolling motor on. If you're on a polling skiff, get over, get around the fish and approach very quietly, whether it takes five or 10 minutes or 15 minutes to get over to where the fish are at. You don't want to know that them to know you're there and spook them. So that's number one. As I would say for any tarpon fish, one of the key factors is to approach gently to just not cause any ruckus. Once you get to the spot and you figure out you want to always be up tight of them and throw your baits down current to them. So you want to be up so they don't feel, feel you at all. Once you get there, try, a, I would say, more than one different leader line size, more than one different. Play with your – see see what they will respond to um, once you get there. Um, and like at different times of year, they – they eat different forage. So in the winter time, they don't want to chase down a live fish, a live big fish like a mullet. You want to use a shrimp or a crab. It doesn't move very far. Their metabolism is slow, and they'll eat it readily. In the summer, they change. Once they get into the spring and fall, they start to eat mullet. And that's their favorite, if you look it up, favorite thing they love because it's, it's, it's substantial. It's a good big piece of meat, the mullet. It's, you know, ranges from six, seven inches to 14 inches. And... It's, it's the irresistible bait. You want to use 50 
to 80 pound test braid attached to a bimini twist. You're gonna double your line. Well, if you do a single braid to your fluorocarbon, when you get over 100 pounds, there's a very great chance it'll snap or it will slip. It doesn't, it's just the knot will slip. It's so much weight and so much power. So that double line connection gives you double the line from your main line. When you have your leader, now you use braid now. They see braid, that vision is incredible. So your mount of your leader is imperative that every book will tell you six feet to eight feet of fluorocarbon leader. Don't use any less than 10 feet of fluorocarbon leader. Even if it has to go through your guides and you don't like it not going through your guides, go, t I use 10, I use up to 18 feet of fluorocarbon leader. So it's, it's and most people, I don't do that, but I believe that those tarpons circle around when they're looking. And if you don't have 18 feet of that crystal clear translucent line and you only have a little bit, they see all that other line. So they turn around and they're like, oh, that don't look, then they get all spooked off. So I used to use six, I used to use 10, I've worked my way up to 18. I know other guides are gonna be on this thing listening, they're like, hey, this guy uses 18 feet a leader. <laughs> and once you use that leader, make sure never to reel it into your spool when you take it out. Because once you reel the leader, even though it's 18 feet long, into your spool, it creates memory. And that, that memory is gonna coil up it's, it's gonna make that little coil. If it's not laying perfectly straight on the floor and, they, and it's curling, they won't mess with it. So when I have my, my rods, I have 18 feet of leader wrapped around and put on the side perfectly on the side of my rod. So when I lay it down, it lays all the way flat. Little, little nuances that are make or break the whole trip. You could have everything right, the right yeah. bait, the right hook size, the right everything. And if you've got some nicks in your line and it's curled up, you're not going to get the bite. Yeah, what kind of rod and reel combos and stuff are you? you For a little tarpon, you could use a five and 6,000 size reel. For any big tarpon, you need at least an 8,000 size reel, um, up to 10,000. And you're going to use 50 to 65 pound braid uh, with a rod. Th that's the key part. The reel doesn't pull in the rod. The reel just holds the line that, 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 that gathers it. All the fighting is through your rod. So I tell my clients, let them eat it, let them take it. A big, a big problem is people, they get, they get very excited. It's a big explosion. They get too early. Yeah. They set it too early. Let them eat, let the rod load. When the rod loads, slowly reel down. You don't want to reel down fast yeah. because he could feel that and he'll spit it out if you reel into it. So you want to reel, they rather get on him. And once you're tight, barely put your finger on the spool. That will ensure a good hook set. You almost want to move the fish slightly. So hmm. now you're, it's, this is where it takes years of practice, but you get it, is you want to pull as hard as you can to get the hook in that hard, they have unbelievably hard bony mouths that are um, yeah. hard to get a hook in. But once you get it in, get it, move the fish, then immediately let them go. Let go of the finger on the spool and back off your drag. Let it go very loose and let him just take, there is no fighting the fish. So you're, you're letting, just him run. letting him you're run. You're just letting him yeah, run. And, and if you impede on that, motion at all <clears throat> while he's running and jumping and you hold the spool or your drag is too tight, even though it feels loose, but he's getting more line and the drag is getting tighter and tighter as he's taking out line. The chances of the fish throwing the hook or breaking the line are huge. But if you just have no slack yeah. and very loose drag and the fish jumps, there's no tension to pull and make that hook dislodge. It's, it's all loose. Yeah. So he's just jumping free. So the key is to let it go. Once he gets done getting ballistic, then you slowly do the, and put steady, hard tension on the fish, constantly reeling your rod tip down to the water line and pulling and reeling it down. And I like to come. So you're reeling down all the way and pulling up. What about when they, when they do like come out of the water and stuff? You're are bowing. You, you are keep, always, because okay. you want that constant slack. So you'll know when the, the line starts to rise, you'll feel that he's about to jump or that's when he will jump. The line will rise. So get, get used to when you start to see it scope out and get high, get ready to lunge forward because that lunging creates slack once again, that will not dislodge the fish. If you're, if he jumps and you're back here, then um, he'll jump off. The rod's bent. There's no, yeah. there's, there's no weak connection. And once you catch them, like I said, they're very strong. They have such a will. So even when yeah. you got them, you have to grab them by the face in the mouth yeah. and they're going to go crazy. You would think he'd be tired. He'd, and he looks dead. He, they plop up on their belly yeah. and they look like they're ready to go. But as soon as you put your hands on their face, they go ballistic. And that's where I scream that's like, I'm, that's why my clients look at me like I'm an animal because you're actually in a fight. You're sitting there and, yeah. with a fight and he's screaming and he doesn't stop. He'll jump up in the air out of your arms. And it's, and then finally you're sweating and you finally tame him. We take a quick pick, 
The key also. And then let it go. Let, let it go. go. But when you let it go, always remember to revive it. Put his head in the water. Yeah. Put the boat yep. in gear slightly to get water running through his um, his yeah. gills. And that's another yep. huge, you can't just catch the fish, bring it to the side and let it go. He's so exhausted. He They have such will that they they fight to the death. So they're, they're dead. So you're pretty much bringing them back to life after you kind of almost got him on the edge. Seeing that's him go so away fun. after just an epic show he put on and everybody's happy, no worse for wear. <clears throat> that's, and uh, yeah. it's, it's the best, it's the best. When, when's the best time to catch tarpon? Tarp, it, it's, it's, it really is year round here in Miami. It's, yeah, especially where you yeah, are. Where right? I am. Um, yeah. I would say yeah. in general throughout the coast, it's springtime. The spring, they've spawned in months of May and June is when they're spring. So throughout the coast. So if I had to pick a day, a, a month to go fishing, April, they start to come in and migrate and they'll start to spawn. But April, May, and June is, you can't beat those months because uh, can't beat they're it. spawning and they all, they come in huge thousands, thousands of fish in a school and they'll load up and it's, uh, and they're big fish. Those are migratory fish. So they're, if you want to get the big tarp and that's like the time. That. I'm yeah. in for that. What's the biggest one? What's the biggest tarpon you've got? I, I don't like to put weights on tarpon because you really, you can't weigh them. I could get lengths yeah. and girths. I've gotten 79, 81 inches, 79 inch length, 41, 43 inch Jeez. girth. They estimate them at like on the bonefish tarpon trust. You plug the formulas in there, 208 pounders, 200 pounders. So wow. yeah, I've caught it many, a handful or more of 200 pounders. Have you ever fly fished for tarpon? I have, I have fly fish for tarpon. I used to, like I said, a lot, 20 years, 15, 20 years ago, the fish were less, um, finicky and they were more apt to eat a fly um the last few years last 10 or so they haven't been so much and yet not to say they don't eat them i just now i'm a guide and to have somebody throw that many times to try to hook one i'd rather you know get yeah. it. but yes absolutely you could get them that, that's the best you get them on fly you could get them on plugs you could get them on swim baits rubber lures they, Dude, they, they eat so and that's what's so cool, cool about them they eat Anything, yeah. everything. Um, so, you know, there's no, whenever you get, it gets old, target them one way, switch it up, target them, get them on lighter tackle. Yeah. And they're still, they're just, no matter how many times you do it, when you hook them, he jumps crazy and he runs. And it's, if you fish, you love it. You know, there's no, it's not like, you know, I see it every day and it never, I always make a noise. Sometimes my clients aren't as passionate, but I'll be freaking out when the thing, What's your craziest tarpon story? Do you have any crazy ones? I have a lot of crazy ones. I'll try to wrap up a couple quickies. Um, what in particular was a fish that I, it was close to a 200 pound fish, 180 pound fish. And I was in a uh, V-Hall skiff by myself in like a little 12 foot aluminum boat. It's about seven, eight years, 10 years ago, maybe. And I hooked this fish, it's about 160, 80 pound fish on light tackle, 60 pound leader. Didn't jump the first hour. Um, after the fifth, the second hour, he, uh, he, he jumps once and I see how big he is. I'm by myself. I call my buddy up. He's at a, uh, a thrift store at the time. He says, I'll try. He has a, a camera, a nice camera. He says, I can make, I'll try to make it over if you still have it. He ends up coming over. I'm still on with the fish 45 minutes. This is two hours into the battle by myself. And, I, and the fish is just towing me around. It's a little skiff. And I'm just getting pulled. Yeah. And the guy <laughs> comes around, I see him and the fish goes one way and my guy's there, but I'm out of line. So I have no choice. I don't, I want this, the documentation of this fish. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just, I don't care if I lose them. I'll go, I'm going to go drive with my trolling motor over to the guy on the wall, on the, the cement to go jump in my boat. The fish is going one way. I'm driving the other way to pick up my friend. So the line, he just gets enough line. He jumps in the boat. I chase the fish down. We find him for, it was ended up to be a two and a half hour battle. And are you crazy? Kidding? And the guy gets in the boat and I end up getting the fish. I, 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 so you, you I did, did get, get it. it. So that was incredible. And another quickie is these freshwater tarpon. They come in here in strictly fresh water because they have an air bladder, which allows them. That's what. That's why their will is so much. Halfway through the fight, they could gather. They have another forms of gathering air. So they're they're up in these backwater canals, and I bass fishing, and I hook like a sixty pound, sixty seventy pound tarpon on a bass tackle. The fish goes. Are you kidding? Uh, yeah, which is sick. But usually, I've done it a bunch. But you lose them. You got twenty. I had twenty pound Dude, leader. That's sick. I had twenty yeah, pound yeah. fluorocarbon leader and a little and fifteen pound braid. The fish goes underneath two bridges. So, but there's there's a bridge that they're connected, and 
any other way, but he went on the inside pylon. If he went in the middle, there's all these pillars that would've been gone in two seconds, but he stayed the closest one to shore. Yeah. I could, it was so low that I, it's actually on my Instagram feed. If you look back a couple years, 2016, I had a walk crawl underneath both bridges and follow this fish. He actually, I, without getting into all the pylons, I don't know how he went on the inside one. I walked him out to the other side. He went all the way through. And we, I take this thing a mile down the canal, walking in Are water up to my me? alligator infested water up to my, um, you know, my neck and around the trees. And after about, um, you know, I don't even know. I think that was an hour and 20 minute battle. I got a freshwater tarpon on bass tackle on a one odd hook on a one, like the littlest hook. So that was, that was probably one of, not the biggest tarpon I've caught, but definitely the craziest, uh, you know, the cra and so I let out such a roar when I got done catching that fish because it was exhausting. Yeah. It was a, uh, you know. I want to go. It's just, gosh, dude. When I come to Florida, we're going, what is your business that you have? SoFlo Inshore Charters. SoFlo, okay. like South Florida and Inshore Charters. And we can just go online and sign yep. up. Yeah, I appreciate it. Go, yeah, you can go say, ahead. hey, I want to charter with you, Dave. And Thank you, brother. Yeah, no, I would love to have you on. I see your passion for, for the outdoors and for fishing. Um, oh, I love it. I, I'm so into it. I love the outdoors. I've been, to, I went tarpon fishing. I actually got bit. I got hooked up and then the thing just came right off. That was the only, only time I've ever gone tarpon fishing. And my whole, my goal is still to catch a tarpon. So oh, uh, I'm, next time I'm in Florida, I'm definitely going to hit you up yeah. when we're going. I love that. I would love that. They're, they're always here. Like I said, I love the froth too. The froth that you have for these fish is so cool. And what you know about it and everything, it's, it's insane. I appreciate that. You know, it's one of those beautiful sicknesses, illnesses, whatever you want to call it, but it's 24 seven since I'm a little kid. I go every yeah. day is different. And my night, all night long, my head turns on just yeah. how to target this day and it's just never ending and and i just i never never does get old it's like very cliche to say that you're always thinking of new i'm looking at old articles and it's just it's it's something that it's the one fish if i could die i mean when the day i die around my one fish to go out with is a tarpon if i could get one on the line uh, i'm good <laughs> so uh <laughs> i love it i love it do you have any social media or, or Instagram or yes, YouTube or yeah, anything yeah, that we can yeah, check Yeah, man, out? I would love a, a cat, C-A-P-T, David Cohen um, is the best way to book me on Instagram. Um, just DM me um, and then I'll give you a call right back and we'll, if I have a date available, I'll put you in and we'll go over the details. And um, this next couple months is, is my favorite, like I said earlier in the podcast, May and coming up on May, if I had to pick a month. It's May every year. If you're going to do it, do it right. Get up really early up for these early. things. Be there when the, when the, at the water, when the light's not even coming up yet, just coming up. That's when you got the best shot. If you come out there too late, you might miss that little window. So that's another key thing is, you know, don't short yourself with, with the time. Get it, do it right. Do it like anything in life, you know, do it, do it right. Dave, thanks. Thanks so much for chatting it up. I could talk to you about this all day long. I really appreciate oh. you coming on though, man. <laughs> My pleasure, Kieran, man. This has been awesome. It's, you know, easy peasy. I, I love this. Easy stuff, peasy. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Right. And thanks everybody thank for listening you. in. We'll catch you next time on Above and Below.